Hello and welcome to another episode of Hollywood Wargaming, and today we are going to be continuing our Bolt Action Unit Guide, a series in which each entry is going to cover a specific unit type in the game and other rules that are usually associated with them. And in today's episode, we are going to begin looking at some anti-tank artillery pieces, starting off with the Humble Light AT Gun which is going to be very frequently present in the artillery slot in your reinforced platoon, and will show up on a lot of early war tanks, which is of course going to be in your armored slot in your reinforced platoon, and will sometimes even show up on that armored car slot, such as the M8 Greyhound for the US faction. And the Germans even have a transport option that makes use of the light anti-tank gun on that SDKFC 250-10. But overall, the light AT gun is a profile that represents a lot of different artillery pieces that were carried over from the interwar period, and some of them even date back to World War I. And because of that, the light AT gun profile, as the name implies, is not going to pack that punching power that you're going to see show up in a lot of the late war tanks. And because of that, not only are light AT guns going to be relatively weak, coming in at a penetration value of plus 4, they are also going to have shorter range at just 48 inches. Now, I say just 48 inches, but that is pretty respectable, as that distance is going to cover the entire short edge of the battlefield, which means this artillery piece is going to have a good threat range, and can likely lock down half of the battlefield to any armor that is not big enough to challenge it. Now, that being said, with a penetration value of just 4, which is going to drop off to 3 at long range beyond 24 inches, any opponent with a medium tank or larger may call your bluff and enter this unit's arc of fire. And while a light anti-tank gun can kill a medium tank, the dice are pretty stacked against that happening. However, as we all know, bolt action isn't a game about killing everything. In many games, you can win the day by pinning out your opponents, which can stop them from activating, and allow you to win the game through objectives. And when you consider that light AT guns usually cost in the 50 point range, you will realize that pinning out a 200 point medium tank for the duration of a game makes it a pretty phenomenal investment. And if your opponent is making use of things like armored cars and transports, they are now going to have a serious threat on the battlefield, which is going to have a huge impact on how they deploy and maneuver their units across the field. Because even if this light anti-tank gun is hitting them at long range, with that reduced penetration value of 3, they are going to be scoring superficial damage on tankettes and half-tracks on a roll of 4+, plus and penetrating on a 5 and 6, meaning at 48 inches you are going to have a pretty fair chance at putting those very light armored units out of commission, be it through excessive pinning or outright destruction. Now, with a light tank, you're going to increase all of those dice rolls by 1, scoring a superficial at long range on a roll of 5, and a penetration on a roll of 6. And while your odds there aren't super favorable for a knockout, your opponent's light tank is going to be a unit that costs double or even triple the amount of that light anti-tank gun, and they are not going to want to risk it by throwing it into the fray and going face to face with that light AT gun. Now, in both of those scenarios, I was implying that you're firing at long range and targeting your opponent's frontal armor, as that is the most common ways I see tanks and AT guns engage each other. Obviously, things are going to change in your favor if you get the tank on its side armor or they come within close range of you, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to base all of the statistics and math hammer here on that long range frontal armor scenario. Now, the light anti-tank gun's battlefield potency really starts to drop off once you start encountering vehicles with an armor value of 9 or higher, which is medium tanks, heavy tanks, and of course, super heavy tanks. And when you engage medium tanks, you're really going to be fishing for a superficial hit and hoping that you can either pin the unit out or knock them out by setting them on fire. The plausibility of getting a full knockout is going to rely on some pretty lucky dice and some command gaffes on your opponent's part, as that frontal armor at long range will only receive superficial hits on a roll of a 6. Now, that being said, if you can get that vehicle on the side armor or have it within close range, you will be able to get a superficial hit on a roll of a 5 and get some actual penetration going when you roll a 6. And if you're lucky enough to get a medium tank on its side armor at close range, you are going to be getting a superficial on a roll of a 4 and penetration on a 5 and a 6. And because of that, light anti-tank guns are very, very good at punishing enemies who get too aggressive, and perhaps underestimate that penetration value on the light anti-tank gun, something many players tend to do. And all of that makes the light anti-tank gun a very good soft AT counter for a pretty low points investment, again coming in around 50 points if you're running it as an artillery piece, 
And if this weapon profile is making an appearance on your armor units, it's usually on a light tank, which tend to come in around that 120 to 150 point range. However, this unit being such a budget buy is going to have further drawbacks, the first of which being that it's relatively fragile, whether it shows up on a light tank, artillery piece, or armored car. Now, light tanks and armored cars we already talked about in this video on the other end of the barrel, and if we just discussed how vulnerable they are to light anti-tank fire, having a light AT gun on one of them is also going to be vulnerable. And if your opponent's tank is going to be running an anti-tank weapon that's larger caliber than the 4 plus penetration, you're going to need a good amount of luck to win that duel. When fielded as an artillery piece, light anti-tank guns often only appear as a three-man unit, which means if they are caught out in the open by small arms fire, they will be chewed up rather quickly. Also, stationary artillery pieces are very popular targets for things like snipers and mortars, which of course is going to create a pretty strong rock-paper-scissor dynamic between armor, anti-tank guns, and units such as mortars or infantry. It's also worth noting that most light anti-tank guns will have a gun shield on them, which is going to increase the number that your opponent must roll when wounding your models when they are hit by an incoming attack that is not high explosive. Now, the gun shield is an upgrade that costs around 5 points, and you will see light anti-tank guns coming in at 45 points that don't have the gun shield upgrade, and some that can be upgraded to equip it. Now, the gun shield isn't essential, but it's definitely a nice little perk for just 5 points, and might deter some small arms fire from coming your way. So I would recommend equipping it, but for the most part it's not really going to make or break the units, so long as you're deploying this thing rather conservatively. Now, with durability issues out of the way, we are going to move on to another problem that plagues a lot of units in the game, and that's the fact that the anti-tank gun is going to be a one-shot unit which, in a game like Bolt Action, that relies on a variety of hit modifiers to calculate combat, can be quite punishing. As I said earlier, most of the time with a light AT gun, you are going to be engaging opponents at long range, which is going to confer a minus one hit, meaning you already are down to 50-50 chances of scoring a hit before you even roll your penetration. The upside here is that your targets are going to be vehicles, which don't make use of things like cover or down orders, so unless you're taking a lot of incoming firepower and gaining pins, you're usually going to be hitting on a 4 or 5+. plus. However, as many bolt action players will tell you, we've played games where you roll that dice again, again, and again every turn, and simply cannot land a hit. After that, there is a bit of a conundrum in bolt action when it comes to anti-tank weapons, as tanks for the most part aren't very viable in the game, and that's again due to the nature of activations, hit modifiers, and pins, which prove to be extremely harsh on high points single model units. Also, there is only one armored slot in a reinforced platoon, so unless your opponent is fielding armored cars and armored transports, your anti-tank guns are usually going to have one objective for the game, and that's going to be to halt your enemy's armor. And should they fail at that, you're not really going to be able to redirect them anywhere else on the battlefield. Yes, all anti-tank guns can fire high explosive shells also, but they are downgraded two tiers in relation to the gun's caliber, which means these light anti-tank guns are only going to be giving you a 1 inch high explosive profile, which is a nice tool to have in your arsenal, but definitely not the intended use for this unit, and the best use of those points you invested in it. But going back to that conundrum of the armor, anti-tank guns exist to counter a unit type that's not super competitive in bolt action, and I have definitely run successful games where I just outright ignore my opponent's tanks. That being said, the light anti-tank gun of all the AT gun options out there, is the variant that suffers from the drawbacks of this conundrum the least, as it is such a minimal points investment. Also, when you do see light anti-tank guns show up on light tanks, it's usually alongside a coaxial machine gun, and sometimes a lot more machine guns. So, while I might be bringing that M3 Stewart as a hard infantry counter, having a light AT gun, even if I only fire it once for the entire match, is a very nice tool to have that doesn't act as a detriment to the overall strategy of the unit. And there are many other early mid-war tanks that can run amok on the battlefield as mobile machine gun nests, and then turn and fire that light anti-tank gun at something like a half-track, and really give your opponent's forces a bloody nose all across the board. It's also worth mentioning that if you do need to tow an anti-tank gun, the light AT gun is the most towable option, which can make or break them in certain scenarios. So overall, the light anti-tank gun is going to be a very viable unit to keep in your arsenal, one that's going to work really well as a soft anti-tank counter, 
which when fielded as an artillery piece is going to be more of an area denial unit more so than a long range armor sniping threat. And if you don't know what kind of list you're going to be going up against, it could be a pretty viable option here as it is extremely affordable and can pose as a serious threat against armor vehicles with a value of 7 or 8. Again, excelling against things like half tracks and transports. However, it is also going to show up on a lot of very viable anti-infantry tanks. And even if you are running a tank like the Crusader Mark II, having a rather inexpensive armored vehicle that can serve as both a mobile machine gun pillbox and also an anti-tank soft counter can prove to be a pretty useful jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none unit. Still, if you're going into a match and you know you're going to be facing off against some heavier tanks with more threatening firepower that you don't want to go unchecked, it is worth upping the ante and getting something like a medium anti-tank gun, be it as an artillery piece or mounted on a tank, as that is going to go from a soft to a hard AT counter, not just because of its flat increase in penetration, but also because you're going to have greater range on the weapon, which is a sort of penetration buff in its own right, and will greatly increase your overall threat range. So there you have my overall thoughts on the light anti-tank gun profile. I do actually use these a lot, mainly because I play early mid-war stuff with North Africa, and in those early war periods, it's obviously going to excel a little bit more due to the lack of heavy armor, but that's not going to be the case when you're going into random scenes, be it competitive or just your local hobby shop. However, we're not finished with the light anti-tank gun yet, as there are several popular keywords that do often pop up alongside it, some of which exist to represent older subpar equipment, and others that represent the attempts to retrofit these older guns to bring them up to par with their newer anti-tank counterparts, such as the British Little John Adapter or the German Steel Granate for the Pac-36. But first up here, we are going to take a look at the low-velocity anti-tank guns, and while the light AT guns usually represent interwar period weapons, the low velocity light AT guns usually represent older equipment, sometimes even holdover equipment from the First World War. And this special rule is very simply going to drop your penetration value by 1, taking the light AT gun from a 4 plus penetration value down to a 3 plus. And that is pretty bad. You're going to go from being a moderate threat against vehicles like light tanks, down to being something that even half tracks and armored cars can shrug off, which in terms of damage output is going to bring you closer to an anti-tank rifle than a proper artillery piece. Now, there might be a few tankettes out there that make pretty good use of this downgrade to bring down their points while machine guns do the heavy lifting, but for the most part, I think the low velocity keyword is a pretty abysmal one to have. And if possible, I would definitely recommend upgrading to a standard light AT gun profile, as a penetration value of 3 is not efficient enough to counter most armor. But after the low velocity keyword, we are going to have the squeeze bore keyword. And without going into that battlefield technology, basically this is going to be a weapon that's going to front load its power at short range, with the projectile losing its efficiency over distance. And this special rule is going to give you a penetration bonus at range 12 inches or less, taking it from plus 4 all the way up to plus 6. Yes, you heard me right, plus 6, which is the penetration value of a heavy anti-tank gun. However, if you have managed to get this gun that close to your enemy's tank, something has gone horribly wrong on their part. And if such an opportunity presents itself, you may have already inevitably won the game at that point. However, when a squeeze bore weapon is firing at long range, again, that's going to be beyond 24 inches for the light anti-tank gun, that penetration bonus that we saw earlier is going to come around, but this time subtract penetration at long range, meaning you're going to go from having a penetration value of 4 down to just a 2. So that means at long range, against a light tank's armor value of 8, you are going to need to roll a 6 to score a superficial hit. Not exactly ideal. So while the squeeze bore special rule does sound like a kind of gamble, it really isn't as there's not going to be very many scenarios in which your opponent runs a tank up within 12 inches of your anti-tank gun, which means I would highly recommend you guys stay clear from the squeeze bore special rule. As I said earlier, if you really need that extra penetration, just go take a medium anti-tank gun, as this is a really blockheaded way to try and fit that into your list. However, there are some more specialized rules that do occur that can modify light anti-tank guns depending on which faction you play. 
For example, the Steel Granate for the Pack 36 that the Germans have is going to be a 15 point upgrade that is going to give you plus 2 penetration when in close range, bringing you up to a penetration value of 6, again the heavy anti-tank profile, and won't confer any negatives at long range aside from the standard minus 1 penetration. And that means this weapon's penetration value when firing the Steel Granata is going to be 6 at close range and 3 at long range. Very similarly, the British have the Little John Adapter that does the same thing more or less, but also has the chance that it might break on you if you roll a bad hit, which in my opinion just isn't worth the risk. As for the Steel Granata itself, 15 points is not a cheap upgrade, and at that point you are getting close to the cost of a medium anti-tank gun, which is going to have more penetration at long range, and better range overall. So while it is arguably the best keyword to have added on to this light anti-tank gun profile, I would avoid it unless I'm going for some more scenario based or casual play. And I'm sure there's a few other keywords out there for the light anti-tank gun that are very niche, perhaps only appearing on one unit that I may not have noticed, but between squeeze bore, low velocity, the little John adapter, and the steel granata, I think you guys get the idea here. Don't gamble with your penetration values, especially if the bonuses come at short range. These are long range weapons, they're not meant to get close to your enemies, and if your opponent does come within short range, it's probably not with a tank, but instead a marauding squadron of veteran infantry who are about to punch you in the face. But that is going to thoroughly cover the light anti-tank gun and the keywords that are associated with it. It's not the most effective unit in the game, but it can be pretty efficient when squeezed into a list at its low point cost. But if a new player were to come and ask me what anti-tank gun I should buy for my collection, I would probably say go get a medium anti-tank gun. But we are going to have more videos covering the other anti-tank weapons in the near future, so go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're not already, consider leaving a like on this video if you enjoyed it or found it useful. If you're a veteran player, leave a comment below telling me about your favorite unit that implements the light anti-tank gun. And of course guys, until next time, take care.